if you download that, then now let us uh, open the file as we have done last week. So click on browse. And I have three files for we download it. The lecture data set one and data set two. I'm going to work with data set one first. So click on that and open. And you open. So he says, here's the file. And uh, I'm gonna say hit next. It looks very similar to Excel. However, it's uh, uh, specialized in cleaning the data. So in this sense, it's really good. And, you know, usually it picks up the, the format of the data very well. So you see the office title and office description office address, state, uh, candidate name, candidate address, and so forth, you can see, right? So these are a large uh, file and you want to parse next one line as a column and store blank rows and store blank cells as nulls that you can do. And then hit create project, right? Or you can change the name, right? So you can change the name or you can just create the project as the name it is and create. And now the project is created, right? The project is created. And we see that it has 6,865 rows. So if you want to see the data, uh, a lot of data, then you can just click on 1000, then 1000 rows are gonna be displayed per screen, right? And if you want to just uh, hide this left pane, then you can click on this left arrow, then it's gonna be gone. If you wanna expand it again, you can click on it, right? So you can just adjust the size of the screen as you want. Right. And then just like Excel, it has a, a lot of menus and notice that the first row includes all these filtering menus, downward arrow. And that's what we are gonna be mainly using to apply any function that we want to um, uh, handle. So that's what we wanna do. So this data is Louisiana Secretary of State of officials. So those are, these people are the officials in, in Louisiana, the state of Louisiana. And uh, obviously we see different types of members and how many times they were elected and those information is available right here. And as we have done before, let's uh, first um, talk about uh, data validation. So you want to examine that these are containing lots of uh, text, right? So when you have numbers, that's a fine. However, when you are dealing with the text, sometimes it's gonna be very cumbersome for you to clean that text because there are uh, duplicates and inaccurate information and uh, trailing spaces and white spaces. So those things are gonna be bothering you and you want to cleanse the data, clean the data as much as possible so that uh, uh, your, your analysis will be meaningful later. So that's what we are looking at at this moment. And as we have done before, uh, one of the things that you want to do is whether the format of the data is correct or not, right? For example, the date, uh, expiration date and commission date. And uh, we want to see whether these dates are uh, formatted right. So we have a different function in OpenRefine. If you just click this downward arrow, you see facet, text filter, edit cells, edit column, uh, transpose, sort, view, and reconcile, right? So these are the function, powerful functions that we, gonna, we are gonna be using today. And first, let me talk about facet. Facet is looking at one aspect of a variable, the column is a variable, and we will see that, uh, 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 aspect of that powerfully using this function. And the text facet is like accounting all the 
uh, uh, text in the cells together. Right? It, it, it creates uh, a histogram very quickly. And we will say the numeric class, numeric class shows you a histogram that, sh that is how, how the number is distributed. It could be normal distribution, it could be by Namian distribution, bipolar distribution, or uh, it could be, you know, Poisson distribution and so chi square distribution. So that you can tell quickly by using numeric facet. Timeline facet is uh, like a date, right? So from 2000 to 2012, that timeline is going to be shown right here if you're using timeline facet. And scatter plot of facet, you can have numbers, say GPA, and you can see how they are uh, spread around. They can be shown here too. And also, you can use custom text facet and so forth. It's a more complicated uh, aspect of a column. So that we can do together. So let's first do this uh, text facet. The reason why I'm using the, the text facet is because uh, it has some problem with formatting. So I want to see what kind of problem it has. That's why I'm using text facet. The moment you, are, um, you click on it, then although it has 6,000 something or almost 7,000 rows, it processes pretty quickly and shows you uh, how many uh, dates are available in the rows. For example, January 1st, 2016, uh, 10 of them were there. And uh, January 4th was 22 of them, 375 rows, uh, January 10, 2016. So as you can imagine on the election date, right? So on the election date, new people are going to be elected, so their work record will be uh, more in the, on those uh, election dates. So that you can imagine, if you just scroll down one by one, you see uh, probably you will be able to guess when was the election date, when was the uh, you know just abnormal date to, to find the people. And we see December 31st, 2014, 2,642 people were elected who newly recruited that those things we can see here, uh, right? I think this is good, so I don't have to worry about it. And let's go to commission date. Commission date and let's do facet, text facet. And we'll do the same thing. And at the end, if you go to the end, you will see one record, 29, 10, 2012, right? 29, 10, 2012. So the format is, you know, the, the, in the United States, we use month, date, and year. That, that is our format. But uh, in some other countries, they use different formats, such as uh, this in Europe, you know, 29, 10, the date uh, come, come first. And then, and then uh, the month and the year. If you go to Asia, like Korea, um, uh, year comes first, uh, 2022, and then February uh, 8th, right? So that's how, how it works. So depending on the country that you are in, they're gonna be using different format. And, uh, you know, one thing that you can do is manually you can do, you can go to edit, right? If you click on 29, 10, 2020, then you can edit it manually yourself and change it uh, 10, 29, that you can do, right? So that's a, a beauty of using open reply that uh, you can locally change things uh, right away. It's a, a computer program-based uh, uh, software that you are using. But another thing that you can do is, what you can do is you, get, you go to commission date again, and go to edit cells, and I'm gonna now transform this form, uh, this column, and unify uh, the the date format. So that's what I want to do. So I'm gonna say edit cells, common transforms. There are many common transforms such as trimming, leading, and trailing white spaces. So on the about two weeks ago, we failed to get rid of white spaces in our data. At that time, maybe you know, another option is to use open refine and then just get rid of all these uh, uh, white spaces uh, that you can do. Collapse consecutive white space, you can do that. And uh, uh, title case, uppercase, and lowercase. So 
uh, in Excel, you use a per function or, or um, uh, lower uh, case function. But uh, in OpenRefine, you can just specify it right here. But what I want to do is I want to uh, unify this uh, date into one format. So I'm going to say recognize as a date. So to date, click on it. And then it is going to automatically um, apply it. And then the problem will be solved, right? So it, it used a, a year first and then uh, the month and then dates, right? So, so it just recognized all the errors and then changed it itself. So that's how it, it is programmed and that's what happened. So the same thing that we can do for expiration date, right? So you go to edit cells and then go to common transforms and then to number or not, not to number, to date, you can transform it right away. And that happens if you use that, then in a second that happens. So all the things are just transformed. So in that way you can uh, validate the date and see if there's anything uh, not following the format and you can change that format very quickly here. Once you have done that, now I'm gonna just, uh, you know, exit out of this facet. So just uh, um, click on this X uh, icon and then you exit out of it. And let me see, you know, um, let me um, apply facet, time facet. Now timeline facet and you will be able to see what dates you have in this 7,000 rows, right? And you see that it starts from 2000 and then it goes all the way to 2013, March 25, right? So that's the data that you see and all of them are available. And let's say I want to only select uh, 2013 data, then you, know, you can adjust using these controls on the left and right, you can just, uh, um, change change your selection like this and uh, just choose the date that you want to okay? so, so I'm particularly interested in say the end of the data then you, you can look at it All right so go to end of the data only All right so this data only look at then it's going to be selected there right so the selection of the data is much more visual in open again let's uh, uh, do this text cluster analysis again so let's go to office title I'm gonna just get rid of this uh, timeline and let's go to office title. Office title. Okay, office title right here. And I wanna see if all these titles are good, right? If, is there any duplicated titles or any spelling errors? Those things I wanna check and you can do that uh, by using this um, uh, text facet again. So go to facet, text facet, click on it, and it's going to display all the uh, uh, names. For example, alderman and elderman. Uh, we have the same thing here, but we see that uh, um, although it's the same spelling, it's recognized as different. Right? Why is that? Probably because there are white spaces in, at the end or leaving space, white spaces in the front. So that's why that is happening. So as I said, you can you know, edit it manually or what you can do is you can come to, um, where is it? Office title, yeah. Go there, edit cells, come on transform and trim leading and trailing white space, right? So if you click on that, then you will get rid of, this function will get rid of all these uh, white spaces that, that you cannot see so that you can have a clear uh, unified uh, text, right? So now that error is gone. Are the man is there? Or we see are the men 
M E N, right? So probably this is a mistype typo, and uh, we can change that uh, manually again. So we go to edit and let's change it to man or the man, M A N, and apply it, and the problem will be um, fixed, right? Right. So so you you are able to uh, correct the problem. However, doing it manually is cumbersome. If you just scroll down, there are so many titles, and uh, I, I want to do it uh, systematically, not manually. So as a result, what I can do is I can click on this cluster, right? So office title below that, you have a 66 choices, sold by name, count, and cluster. So I'm going to click on cluster, and that will um, generate several clusters for you. So key collision method and fingerprint method did not help. So I'm gonna go with ngram fingerprint first and that will give me a few options. Council member at large, council member at large. So it looks the same to me. However, there is a, you know, a lack of formatting. So therefore I'm gonna say, yeah, I wanna merge it and the name has to be council member at large. The first one is the choice by number is larger and it looks proper. So I'm gonna say, yes, please um, merge it. The second one, council member two, council member three. I'm not so sure if this is okay to merge together. So I'm gonna just leave it as it is. But the th uh, third one, 372 records, council member, council member, they are repeating. And I think it's proper to merge them together as council member, right? So I'm going to just check on it and then uh, merge selected and close or recluster. Merge selected and recluster, right? That's the method that I'm going to be using. And we have that. I'm now done with this method. I'm going to go to metaphone three method. And it found more errors there. And we have this one, council members. This one I think can be corrected, right? So um, I need to write, write it down, council members, five words, council, I want to change that later. And then justice of the pieces, right? So that's something, justice of pieces. So that's another thing that you have to think about. And then the third one, council man and council men. And I want to change that into council man. So that can happen. So I'm going to merge and recluster. So that's a metaphor method. And then I'm going to go to now uh, Cologne phonetic method. And one, two, three, I don't know how different they are, but uh, I'm going to skip this. The H Moko uh, Tofu method. I think it's okay. None. And Bader Morse method. No method, nothing found. So now let's go to nearest neighbor method. The method is nearest neighbor. And we are using Levish time method. Council member one, two, three. DPS member, RS member, they're okay. Let's go to PPM method. Council member two, at large. What about this constable, constables? It should be merged as constable. And just to peace. Wow, that's good. So it. it he found the method and just the piece, I'm gonna merge them together. Council member and council members was also found. 
So I'm going to merge these three uh, clusters together, merge and, and re-cluster. Candidate name. So I'm going to go here. Let me see. Cluster and edit. OK. So let's do this. I'm going to go to candidate name, downward arrow, click on it, edit cells, and you will find the cluster and edit. The second line from the bottom, cluster and edit. Click on that, and it displays the clusters. And you see Russell P. Pavich, right? So, you know, two names, they are the same names. And Frank John Labruzzo and so forth. Tony Drick and Tony Drick. So there's a double quotation. So these kind of um, same names are available. Um, so let's uh, try Kenneth Ostinson, this one. So I want to see who they are. I want to I want to see if these are truly duplicate of the record or not. So what you can do is click on browse this cluster. And then you see this person is mayor and 1955 and 1956 and Louisiana. So it looks like uh, the second record is more complete than the other one. I'm not so sure if it is duplicate or not. 1955 and 1956, both years he served as a, as a mayor. It might be. It might be the reason why you have two records. And let's try Tony Drake. Let's try. So I'm going to go to the original uh, tab. And I'm going to see if this person is the one or not. So browse this cluster again. And I think they are different people. But assume that uh, one of them is the same, then what you can do is, you know, you can get rid of one of them if you like to. So that, that can be done. So you can just click on, uh, say, to, uh, with, who was it? Uh, uh, Kenneth Stinson say, uh, we know that these are the same person. So I would just merge them together and merge and recluster that can be done. And you can go to Ngram. And now you have five names. So Tony Drake, they are different people. Or I can just change, I can just get rid of this uh, uh, double quotation because it's confusing. So I'm going to just say, where is them? And JP Morrell. You, you could use this. And so de depending on the context, you can change, but uh, uh, It might be a good reason to try this out. Right? So you do that and go to Metaphone 3, and you see you know, many other names uh, that are showing different patterns. So depending on the context and situation, you can merge them together. That's one other thing that you can try um, in here. So uh, since I have 20 minutes, I'm, I'm, I'm going to cover one more data set and finish this class. So download, download second data set, open refine data set to the CSV file. Open refine data set to file. Download it. And then 
Now I'm going to just copy this IP address 127.0.0.1 and then 3333. Copy and open a new tab and paste it. And new uh, open refine is right here. And I'm going to browse choose data set to the csv file now it's not excel file but csv file and i'm going to click on open hit next and it's going to load the data and it's a csv file so it's good parse next one line that's good use character uh, to include cells that's good so create project so now you created a project and this is a, a data set about um, project and project funding. How much money you are going to give out for entrepreneurial project. So that's what this data is about. And I'm going to first um, get rid of uh, unnecessary rows in this file and uh, come to unique investment identifier and so I want to go to say the last so 1000 rows and then the last record then you will go to the last re record Right, you came to last records, and if you just scroll down to the end, then you see total. I don't know if you see that here, or you see total. So, so there are many total rows, and I want to get rid of this kind of rows uh, in this data set. So, look at this screen again. So, I have this screen, and at, at the end, I have this total row, and this is all necessary for my analysis. And I want to get rid of it. So what I want to do is I'm going to um, click on it. So I'm going to go to star. Okay. I just click on star here. I don't know if you can see it. <laughs> star. And then go to all and pass it and pass it by star. I just apply the text fast facet. Go to the end and total. I'm going to get rid of this. So click on this total. So let me do it again. So I click unique investment identifier, facet, and text facet. And then I have this scroll down to the end. I have total. Then it will select all the total columns, 26 of them. I, I'm going to go to edit rows, star rows. Okay, so I'm going to star them. So all of them are chosen like this. And I'm going to go to edit rows and remove matching rows. If you click on that, then all these star rows are going to be eliminated. Okay, so I, I eliminate all the totals. That's how you do that. Now, another important thing, I'm gonna get rid of this facet. Let's go to, um, 
life cycle cost right here. So if you scroll to your right, then you will see life cycle cost. And I want to transform this one. So let's uh, first apply number. So we have to change this format to number. So I'm gonna to go to edit cells, common transforms to number. So you have to specify whether this is number or not. And whether this is text or number or date that has to be specified. So I'm gonna transform it to number. And that is transported to number. Now the color changed to green. And I'm gonna say facet, numeric facet. We are trying numeric facet for the first time, not text facet because this is a number or cost. So we, let's try numeric facet. And we have this data, right? And we realize that this is too uh, big and uh, the distribution is uh, just very hard to tell. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply log function. So if you use Excel, we have to use create another column and uh, use log function to uh, downsize it. But uh, in um, open refine, what you can do is you can use this change function. So life cycle cost, and on the right, you see a change link, click on it. And here, it uses a little bit different function called the Grail language, the general refine expression language, the Grail language. And what you do is I want to create or apply a new function a log function, so dot, so value, you put that value into log function, right? So, so you just put that uh, function, log function, and inside of the parentheses, put the values in the column, in the cell. That's what you, what you mean by that. And you apply it, click on okay, and then you will be able to apply the function there. Okay, so then click on okay and see what happens. So look at the distribution. You know, before it was only one line, right? However, now it's a, a nice normal distribution, meaning that uh, you are able to downsize it. And uh, the range is from negative six to six, meaning if you use log function, what happens, right? Log, log 1 million, log 1 million is six, right? Log 100,000 is five. So log zero is one. Log point one is negative one. So, so you are able to um, use log transformation to change the distribution of the function of the of the column right away. So that's what happened there. And again, you can choose the range of things if you want by changing things around. For example, I want to understand which one is. <clears throat> the biggest project, and you see Department of, of Agriculture and Farm Program Modernization, start date January 7, 2011, and that's how much more did $119,098. Wow. That's a lot of money. So, so that's what we can see here. So that's a transformation of number. And one more thing that I wanna teach you then and, and conclude today's, today's uh, class. 
that is uh, combining two columns into one. So last time we learned concatenate function in um, open refine, you can combine these two columns um, together using in a, another way. So let's go to agent's name to scroll to your left. Oh. Okay, scroll to your, to your left and then you see agency code and agency name, right? Agency code and agency name. So Department of Agriculture and agency code is five and, and you see Department of Agriculture and six. So sometimes you see that there's a discrepancy between the agency code and agency name. And I wanna find out whether they are aligned or not. And to do that, what I want to do is I want to create another column using these two uh, uh, columns. So to do that, I'm going to go down and edit column, right? Edit column. So in edit column, you have a split into several columns. You can split a column into several columns here or join columns, add a column based on this column, add a column by fetching URLs. Actually, you can use URLs to find the data that you can do. And uh, add a column from reconciled values, rename this column, remove this column, uh, these things you can do. What I wanna do is add a column based on this column, right? That's what I wanna do. I wanna create a column based on this and add another column to that. So that's what I want to do. So click on add column based on this column. And it says um, agency name and code, right? So that's what I want to create again. And here I'm going to be using a function to do that. And it is a little bit more complicated, but uh, we can do this. So value, value means the value of this column is going to be included in here. Right? That's what it is. Value of this column will be included in this column. And I want to add agency code to this uh, column as well. So I want to add another column, right? So that's plus. I want to add another column. And I want to um, put parentheses. So just like a concatenate function, you use a double quotation mark saying, yeah, I want to add a parenthesis here, right? And then I want to add another thing, right? What do you want to add? I want to bring value from a cell called agency code, right? So that's what I want to bring in. So here you will want to write cells. I want to bring the cells and um, cell named agency code, right? So here you are gonna use bracket, not parentheses. Cells, and that is called um, agency code. And you have to make this Grail language understand that this is from existing cell. So you can do that by adding double quotation between agency code. So I have bracket cells, so bring these cells called agency code, and that is inside of the bracket, and you have to put a double quotation mark in there. And then this is going to be the value. You want to bring, bring that. And you want to close the parentheses. Did I do it right? Okay, so this is the function that I want to try. So it says there's no syntax error, so pretty good. I'm feeling good, click on okay. And agency name and code, right? A new, new column is created, it's called agency name and code. And I have agency name, oh, I'm sorry. 
which is Department of Agriculture, and I added, uh, you know, a parenthesis, and that's five, right? So here, basis code value is trans transferred over here, and I have a, a, a parenthesis there. And then you can add facet, text facet, and see if they are matching. For example, Department of Agriculture, you have five, but in some other cases, you have six. So I think this one had to be um, changed, right? So you can visit there and um, you may want to change this agency code to five that you may consider doing it. And we have 275 of them uh, with the six. So that one has to be worked out too. Department of Defense, seven, that's good. Education, 18, energy, 19. Service 9, 24, the rest of them looks good. Only Department of uh, Education is problematic. Am I right? Oh, okay. Yeah. So if you wanted to add a space between commerce and six, What could, could have you done? Let's do it again for an exercise. So add a column based on this column value, right? We started with this one plus add, add parentheses. And I'm now I'm gonna add a space, right? So space and then column, right? And then close the quotation. And then plus bring the value from cells, cells, and that cell, what value is it, right? So cells, and that value is from agency uh, code. So quotation agency code, close the quotation um, and the bracket, and then dot value plus. Right. So this was the formula. No syntax error. But what I did was I just added one space in front of parentheses. That's all I did. Okay. So if you now new column name, agency name, and code two, and see what happens. Right. And you will see that the space is added in front of uh, the parentheses. So in this way, you can add and manipulate uh, two columns together. And that's another thing that you can do in OpenRefine. There are endless things that you can do with OpenRefine. See, now you have a space in between, right?